posted a video a few days ago where I experimented with the shape of the function x squared mod n. I'll put a link to the full video in the chat below. There were some amazing patterns that appeared there, and what I'm going to do over the next couple of videos is explore the patterns that occur. Again, let's review what we're considering here. Choose and fix the number n, then consider the function f of x, which is x squared modulo n. Now consider the directed graph where we draw an edge from x to f of x and see what the graph looks like. In today's video, I will concentrate on the case where n is a power of 2. Specifically, we assume that n is 2 to the k for some positive k. Let's show a few examples of the patterns we get when n is a power of 2. What do we notice? First, the graph always has exactly two components. Second, each component is a directed tree. One tree has a root of 0, and the other has a root of 1. Notice that the 0 tree has all of the even numbers, and the 1 tree has all of the odd numbers. Finally, while it is probably not clear exactly what the pattern is, we see that the numbers in each tree form layers, and we will show below the formula that describes which layer all of the numbers sit in. Let us now make some dynamical observations. First note that 0 and 1 are fixed points of the map F, and in particular, this means there is no path from 0 to 1 or from 1 to 0, implying that there must be at least two components of the graph. We will now show a result that every odd number eventually ends up at 1, and every even number eventually ends up at 0, under repeated application of the map f. To see this, first note that squaring a number preserves its parity. x and x squared are either both even or both odd, and moreover, taking modulo by a power of 2 also preserves parity. Therefore, if a number ends up at 1 under the application of f, it must be odd, and if it ends up at 0, then it must be even. Now let's consider the cases separately. First, assume that x is even. Then by definition, x is divisible by 2. Therefore, f of x is divisible by 4, f of f of x is divisible by 8, etc. Eventually, under some application of f, this will give us 2 to the k, which is n, and that's going to give us 0 mod n. Now let us assume that x is odd. If x equals 1, then we're done, because f of 1 is 1, so let's assume that x is greater than 1. Then x must be of the form a times 2 to the l plus 1. To see this, note that since x is odd, that x minus 1 is even, and therefore is divisible by 2, so just pull out the maximum number of powers of 2. Therefore, x equals 1 modulo 2 to the l for some positive l. Now we compute. If x is a times 2 to the l plus 1, then x squared is a squared times 2 to the 2l plus 2a times 2 to the l plus 1. Note by rearrangement that each of the first two terms is divisible by 2 to the l plus 1. And therefore, if x is 1 mod 2 to the l, then x squared is 1 mod 2 to the l plus 1. By induction, if we apply f enough times, then we eventually get a number that is 1 modulo 2 to the k, or 1 modulo n, and we're done. Note that this proves that the graph has exactly two components, odds and evens cannot mix, and the components must be trees. Since every point ends up at either 0 or 1, there can be no closed loops in the graphs, and then by definition, these components are trees. Now finally, let's look again at one of these graphs and try to understand what mechanism puts which numbers in each layer. Let's first look at n equals 16. First concentrate on the even component. Notice that every term in the top layer is of the form 2 mod 4. In the next component, we have the numbers that are 4 mod 8 and 8 itself. Now concentrate on the odd component. Notice that the numbers in the top layers are all numbers of the form odd multiple of 4 plus or minus 1. For example, we have 4 plus or minus 1, which is 3 and 5, 12 plus or minus 1, 11 and 13. The next layer has 8 plus or minus 1, and 15, which note is minus 1, modulo 16, itself. Now let's move on to n equals 32. Let's look at the odd component first this time. Notice that every element in the first row is an odd multiple of 4 plus or minus 1. 4 plus or minus 1 gives us 3 and 5. 12 plus or minus 1 gives us 11 and 13. 20 plus or minus 1 gives us 19 and 21. And 28 plus or minus 1 gives us 27 and 29. The next row gives us odd multiples of 8 plus or minus 1. 8 plus or minus 1 gives us 7 and 9. 24 plus or minus 1 gives us 23 and 25. Finally, note that the third row has 16 plus or minus 1 and 31, which is minus 1 itself. 
For the even component, it's the same pattern as we saw before. The top row is numbers that are 2 mod 4, the next row are numbers that are 4 mod 8, etc. Okay, so how are we going to describe this pattern? We're going to do this for the odd case, leave the even case for the reader if you like, but let's consider the odd numbers. Recall again that n equals 2 to the k. Let us describe a weight function on the integers as follows. Let's define w of 1 to be 0, w of minus 1 to be 1, and then for any l strictly between 1 and k, if x is an odd number times 2 to the l plus or minus 1, then w of x is defined to be k minus l. With a little bit of work, one can show that this l is uniquely defined for every integer in the set. Then we can show the theorem that w of f of x is w of x minus 1. Specifically, f makes the weight go down by exactly one under each application, and therefore the weight corresponds to layers in the tree going up if we label the root as layer zero. Now, to see that this happens with the weight, let's assume that x is a times two to the l plus or minus one, where a is odd. Doing some computations, we can see that x squared is an odd number times 2 to the l plus 1 plus 1. So if the weight of x is k minus l, the weight of f of x is k minus quantity l plus 1, which is exactly one less than k minus l. As I said before, similar statement improved for the even numbers. Leave that for the reader, and I'll stop there.